All right, last 4.4, rates of change in polynomial functions. Let's look at this example. We're going to move backwards just a little bit and look at the actual question first. Question says, determine the average rate of change from x equals 2 to x equals 6 on the function f at x equals x minus 3 cubed plus 1. What is this question asking us? Well, it's asking us the slope of the secant line from 2 to 6 on the particular graph. Just like we've done it in, in the past, folks, all we have to do is use the idea of calculating the slope of the secant line from 2 to 6. So average rate of change is equal to f at 6 minus f at 2 all over 6 minus 2. What this means is that we're going to plug in f at 6 into the equation. So show me that step, folks. It, just in case you make a mistake, it's a good idea to show that you're actually doing this step properly before you actually find the value. This way, more marks can be earned in, even though you may make a mistake. So the value for the average rate of change is 7 units per value of time or 7 units per value of change. So 7 would be rate of change. Let's look at the next example. Example number 2, you're asked to estimate the instantaneous rate of change in the function f at x at x equals 2. All right, so let's look at all of this and what this means. Just want to take a step backwards for a second. There we go. And what do we have here is the following. I can take a particular, let's say, a line here. We're going to take this line, all right, and we're going to snatch the line, and we're going to move them on to the particular graph. So just a second, as I grab this line, and we're going to grab him and put him onto the graph. Now, understand, as I move this particular line all along the graph, this particular line is going to change, okay? And he's going to, this is our tangent line, don't forget. And our tangent line tends to, we want to move this tangent line such that the tangent line will move according to the way we need them to move. So for example, we take this line and we're going to move this line in such a way that he will actually move for us. And we're going to move this line so that you understand the idea of slope. So along this line, the slope of this line is negative. As we move further and further, this tangent line moves across, and now he's at the top of the curve. At the top of the curve, what do you know that the slope of the tangent is at the top of a curve? Hopefully, you remember that it's equal to zero. As we move along the line and go on the other side, we know that the slope changes. The slope is changing depending on the steepness. And as soon as we get closer and closer to a turning point, the slope gets slower and slower so that it eventually gets to zero again. And again, we follow it all along. So at x equals 2, let's stop our line at x equals 2. This is the value that we get for x equals 2. So that means that the instantaneous rate of change, if you look at the actual question, is going to be such that the instantaneous rate of change is equal to zero. This is what we're looking at here, folks. What that means, that at 2, 0, okay, it must be a turning point. And looking at the graph, that is true. Another value where there could be a uh, slope of 0 is here and at here. Please do not think that all x-intercepts will have an instantaneous rate of change of 0, which they don't, because at this value, it is not 0. The slope of the value of the tangent line at this point is going to be negative. The slope of the tangent at this value is going to be positive. These, the turning points, are only points at which the instantaneous rate of change is equal to 0. All right. Now, page 236, number 8. A construction worker drops a bolt while working on a high-rise building, 320 meters above the ground. After t seconds, the bolt's height above the ground is s meters where s at t is equal to some function between 0 and 8. That means the time is between 0 and 8. That's the only values we need. 
Part A says find the average velocity for the interval. So notice it doesn't even say average rate of change. It does say the word average, so therefore average, or even the word mean, okay, could be used. We want the average velocity, so we're looking for the average rate of change, and it gives you an interval. So if you remember correctly, average rate of change implies that there's some interval involved. So average rate of change for this is between S8 minus S at 3 all over 5. 8 minus 3. S of 8 minus S at 3 all over 5. You find out that when you plug it in, so we're going to plug it into the equation 8, and we're going to plug into the equation 3, and we're going to find the value. Find that the average velocity is negative 55. Negative 55 what? Well, it's negative 55 meters per second. Now, this is not an acceptable final answer. Your final answer is going to be, therefore, the average velocity is 55 meters per second, and then you put in square brackets the word down, meaning that it's moving in a downwards direction at, during that interval. So the slope of that line is moving in a downwards direction. Part B says find the bolt's velocity. So that's what we're going to do in the next question. The instantaneous rate of change, the A value is 2, the H value is 0 .001. A value is 2, we're going to use the difference quotient. And the H value is going to be 0 .001. So essentially a number really close to 0. Instantaneous rate of change. Let's find the instantaneous rate of change at X equals 2 in, for, in general. So that means we don't know the H value just yet. So we plug it in and we find these values and we get plug in for H so notice what I did doing here is finding the general equation so we plug in S at into the equation and S at 2 alright and we plug it in 2 plus H and 2 we get these values on the bottom note uh, some of you are wondering how was this expanded so quickly Remember that 2 plus h all squared has this concept. A binomial squared is equal to a squared plus a 2ab plus b squared. The way I have people remember it is it's the square of the first plus multiply everything you see. So you see a, a plus, a b, a 2. So you multiply all of those, you get plus 2ab. And then you square the last, which is b squared. Remember that when you square a binomial, it will always result in a trinomial. So that's exactly what happened here. Then I took 5 times 4 is 20 with a negative, so it's negative 20. Negative 5 times 4h is negative 20h, and negative 5 times h squared is negative 5h squared. And we multiply this, and this is the values, well, not 30, but 320, all divided by h. What do we do here? Well, you'll notice that the 320 will cancel with the th 320. The minus 20 will cancel with the plus 20, so that you're left with just minus 20h minus 5h squared. What that will do is we can pull out a negative 5h, so common factor that, h plus 4 on the inside, all over h. Why did we do this? Well, look, folks, this h and this h can now cancel. You can only cancel when there's a product involved. So H and H are part of a product, so they can be canceled. And we have, this is our final answer. Negative 5 times H plus 4 is, now, we let H equal 0 .001, and that is, gives us an approximate answer of negative 20 meters per second. So what we're looking at here, folks, is that the particular function Okay, the velocity at 2 seconds is, therefore, the velocity at 2 seconds is 20 meters per second downwards. So I'm assuming you can give me the therefore statement. So therefore, the velocity at 2 seconds is 20 meters per second downwards. All right, folks, that's the end of the video. Take care. Have a good night.